Interestingly enough, how to read or interpret a titer is one of the most confusing things in veterinary immunology. In fact, there are those people who would tell you that there is no correlation between antibody titers and protective immunity. Don't believe them because they're wrong, but they actually believe that. There's uh, statements that are made, well, an antibody titer doesn't re really mean very much except for the moment that it was being tested. And so it's been referred to as a snapshot in time. Well, I've come up with a new uh, uh, adage for antibody titers to things like distemper and parvo and adeno, and they're not a snapshot in time. They're like a motion picture that plays on and on and on, in fact, for the life of the animal. So, again, you have to know what agent you're really looking at and the importance of that antibody in protecting that animal against infection and protecting that animal against disease. And we will... Uh, of course, get into more detail about uh, that in a moment. Now, I want to talk a little bit about in-laboratory classic titer test. And the word titer, or teeter, as the English would tell you, uh, they constantly correct my English. It's not supposed to be titer, it's supposed to be teeter. But I like titer. And in fact, when we do a titer test, we generally make serial dilutions, and those dilutions are usually doubling dilutions. And the titer is the highest dilution that provides a positive response, and we'll uh, go over some examples of that. So you need to decide what the highest dilution is, and if you can see this particular slide, you'll see that the first series of wells out to about five or six wells, there's a red dot. These happen to be red blood cells, and that means that you have hemagglutination inhibition. This particular test is a real test that we were performing for antibody to canine parvovirus, and it's the hemagglutination inhibition test. As you get further out, the virus has agglutinated the red cells so you know there isn't any antibody there. The antibody actually causes the inhibition of the agglutination because it reacts with the virus, and then the virus can't agglutinate. We have virus neutralization tests. That's the common gold standard for distemper. And we've got fluorescent antibody tests. We've got enzyme immunohistochemical tests, agglutination of bacteria, etc. So these are some of the standard tests. There are alternate te uh, tests for detection of antibodies as well. And sometimes the, the, the serum is not diluted, so there's not really a titer, but instead you look at the relative binding of antibody to the antigen. And that's done spectrophotometrically, and there's a readout, and that readout gives you the intensity of the antibody reaction. Interpreting a titer, well, when using the doubling dilutions of serum in the gold standard, whenever you see a 1 to 10 dilution, that titer is really 10. Whenever you see a 1 to anything, that's the dilution of serum and the last dilution of serum that gave you a positive result. Just as we were looking at that hemagglutination inhibition, if you went out to a dilution of 1 to 10 and it was still inhibited, the next dilution would be 20, and that was not inhibited. So that was, in fact, a titer of 10. Now, what's really confusing is it's not a titer of 10. Because doubling dilution tests have an error of one dilution above and one dilution below, that dilution of 10 means titer is not less than 5 and not greater than 20. In other words, one doubling dilution above and one doubling dilution below. Another example, and you can look at that and say, geez, there's not much difference between 5 and 20. Well, 
Here's an example where the titer was 1,280. Well, that means it's somewhere between 640 and 2,560. And if they were dollars, there's certainly a difference between 640 and 2,560. But as a titer, that's what it is. 1,280 is between 640 and 2,560. So that's important. And it's often not understood. So people will say, oh, I had a titer done at Lab A, and it was 1280 or 640, and I had that same one tested at Lab B, and it was 12 or 2560. What's the matter with those labs? Nothing's wrong with those labs. The titers are the same. So that's critically important to understand uh, when looking at these doubling dilution titers. And that's why with some of the on-site tests, they don't actually have doubling dilutions. They tell you whether it's positive or negative, and I happen to like that better rather than trying to figure out the titer. Yes, it is protected, or no, it's not. And if it's not, revaccinated, and if it is, you're okay. 